Hi, this is Anuradha Lohia, and I am running the new organization which is called the Wellcome Trust DBT India Alliance. The purpose of this organization is to empower the best scientists to succeed in India. And we do this by giving research fellowship schemes. These fellowship schemes are modeled on the very prestigious international senior fellowship schemes which were, are given by the Wellcome Trust of UK. In order to facilitate more Indian scientists to avail of these schemes, the Department of Biotechnology of the Ministry of Science and Technology in India came into partnership with the Wellcome Trust of UK and formed the India Alliance. As you're all aware, the Department of Biotechnology was formed in the late 1980s and significantly changed the scene of uh, funding in Indian biomedical research in India. They are known for the impact on the growth and application of biotechnology, the basic sciences, in broad areas of agriculture, healthcare, animal sciences, environmental sciences, and industry as well. The Wellcome Trust of the UK is very well known for funding most significant and path-breaking science that is being carried out in the world today. It is a global charity which is dedicated to supporting the brightest minds in biomedical research. So this India Alliance was launched by a formal and official um, um, mechanism in September 2008 and the idea was to emulate the mechanisms that the Wellcome Trust uses to evaluate and uh, peer review scientific grants and applications. So we recruited a team which was sent to the Wellcome Trust to train on their method of evaluation, use their template and make sure that the applicants get the best and the most uh, fair review of their science. So the grants team trained for six months in the offices of the Wellcome Trust in London and we set up office in India in July 2009. Since then we have been funding three sets of schemes which I'm going to talk to you about in a little more, a while. The mission of this uh, alliance is to fund and identify the current and future leaders of Indian biomedical science. What do we fund? We fund the full spectrum of biomedical research. There's no restriction from basic molecular and cellular studies through to clinical and public health research. The size of the scheme is about 80 million pounds about 120 million US dollars for five years. Currently, the scheme is planned to run for five plus five years and will be periodically reviewed for progress. We provide support to the scientists at three key career stages and can give up to 70 fellowships every year within our budget. So as I mentioned, if you are a scientist interested in different aspects of let's say a disease like malaria, you could be studying vector biology, you could be studying structural biology, you could be doing genomics, public health research, clinical research, or uh, just doing other kinds of physiological studies. It was not, the subject matter is not restrictive and we would be happy to fund anything which is of excellent quality through biomedical research. So here is a little information about the three fellowship schemes. The early career fellowship is in effect a postdoctoral fellowship through which we identify fresh graduate students ready to do a postdoc in India. They should be in the last year of their PhD and up, have no more than three years of postdoctoral experience. The intermediate fellowship is targeted to successful postdoctoral scientists who are ready to come and set up their labs in India. The senior fellowships, we expect scientists who have already begun to lead a lab or have attracted a new grant, or first grant at least, and have started to lead their own groups, whether it is in India or any other country. I'd like to add that these fellowships are not restricted to Indians. Anybody who has a commitment to set up his laboratories in India would be funded through our scheme. So what do we provide? We provide competitive personal support we provide very generous research funds, we provide support for international collaborations, and we provide long-term support for four or five years, 
depending on the scheme that you are an applicant for. I'd also like to add that these scheme, the money that we provide is transferable, except for the salary and the travel component, the, which are ring-fenced funds. The research supplies and equipment funds are transferable even after you have received the schemes. So the ballpark funds that we give for early careers are up to one and a half crores. For early career, for intermediates is three and a half, and for seniors is up to five crores. But these, I must emphasize, are rough estimates. And the actual funding will be justified by your science. And if you can convince our committee that this is the money you need, it will be provided for. Here's an example of uh, the first round of fellowships that we awarded. Uh, senior fellow Rashna Bandari is in CDFT in Hyderabad. Two intermediate fellows, Kaushik Chakravarti and Vatsala, are in Delhi and Bangalore. Uh, Arun Sripati is at the Institute of Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore. And here is an example of an early career fellow, Gayatri Muthu Krishnan, who is a graduate student of the University of Pennsylvania, completed a PhD there, and has moved to Jitu Mayer's lab to do a postdoc there. And Ashri Mishra is a postdoc, to name a few of the fellows that we have funded in our first year in office. And I would like to take you through the process we conduct to support high quality applications. Our application process is detailed. We launch our schemes by advertisement in Science, Nature, our website, Current Science, based in India, through which we announce deadlines for different applications. The first stage is the preliminary application, where you're expected to identify a host institute, which will sponsor you, guarantee your lab space, and you will have to identify a good research question. We do an in-house shortlisting of all the preliminary applications for eligibility and competitiveness. And since our mission is really to make you succeed, if we see that your biodata or your application is not competitive within the cohort that we have received, we will advise you to withdraw your application and resubmit in the next cycle or the cycle after that when you think that you have actually strengthened your CV. We would like to make sure that you get the best possible chance of strengthening and competing so that you succeed. We have a no resubmission policy. So if you have submitted a full application and not been successful at the end, I'm sorry we cannot apply, allow you to reapply. So the preliminary application, you have to have this feedback from us, which we hope you will value, and take our advice to come back if you are not competitive enough. If we see this is the best stage for you to apply and this is the time you're strongest with your CV, we will definitely encourage you to go and submit a full application. We send our full applications out for international and expert peer review. And this is then sent to our selection committee, which is also international and global. And uh, they will then shortlist your application. They will then review your applications independently and look at the anonymized refere referees reports. And based on all these inputs, there is a shortlisting to see who will again make it within the cohort. If we see that you're not going to be able to succeed within the competition, we do not want to make you go through the painful process of the whole thing and we'll ask you not to appear for the interview and the successful candidates will be shortlisted and asked to appear for an interview after which the decision will be taken. I cannot emphasize enough the value that is the competition within a cohort and I would like you all to think of it not as a grant application it is given to an individual who has to have a track record and has to compete with other peers who also have their own strengths and weaknesses. A grant, a grant which is reviewed and referees' comments are sent back and then improved upon is not the same as a fellowship which is given to an individual, which is the case here. Our assessment is based on looking at the person's track record, recommendations, uh, which we receive from earlier colleagues or uh, supervisors. Identification of the play, a place where you wish to work. Do you have the appropriate expertise or does the place of 
provide you the right support? And where will you collaborate? What are your plans? Have you identified mentors who are outside of your immediate environment? We look at the proposal for the research question. There are different evaluations for strengths and weaknesses that your proposal may have. And finally, is your budget commensurate with your science? It's not a good idea to just ask for a lot of money just because it's available. Your science must justify the budget. And we'd just like to help you to understand why uh, grants, uh, fellowship applications get turned down by reviewers. It is if you've not done enough uh, attention, given enough attention to detail, or if you've just stated a technique without having any knowledge of it, or how are you going to go and learn the technique if you don't have knowledge of it. Have you put in some preliminary data or not? Is your writing um, of good quality? Are you focused? And are you able to communicate with the reviewer what you really want to do? We do other supportive act activities to make sure that the best candidates get to know about us and how we can help is to collaborate with other organizers in mentoring workshops such as the Young Investigators Meetings which were run by Professor Ron Vale of the UCSF and National Center for Biological Sciences in 2009 and 10. And we hope this will be an activity which will continue and out of which this website came out called the IndiaBioscience.org where you're watching me right now. We're also going to promote grant writing and skill building workshops which we are launching this September. And for attracting and for awareness of all our activities, we are launching an international outreach. We started in 2009 at the Society for Neuroscience and the American Society for Tropical Medicine. And we're going to showcase life science research in India in a one-day satellite meeting at the EMBO meeting in Barcelona later this year. All this information is available on our website, which I invite you all to visit. And uh, you will find over there, if you are a prospective applicant, that there are exhaustive notes for you on how to write grants, on what are the requirements, what you should put in, what you should not put in. And also, there is a list of frequently asked questions, which most of you always have. So go through them. My team, who you see here, have put in a lot of work to put all these things together in one portal in our website and are still available to you to contact by email, phone, or personally visit them. So I invite you all to come build a strong India with your strong science and your brilliance. Come back soon.